Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am here in the Dominican Republic in front of the statue of Christopher Columbus. And this is my first time in the Caribbean. I took a flight from London to Punta Cana and I spent a couple of days in Punta Cana but I didn't make any videos there. I then took a bus here to the capital of the Dominican Republic shooting my first video today in the late afternoon evening in Santo Domingo. I will talk a little bit about the history of Christopher Columbus in this video but first I'm going to head inside this church before I walk around the Zona Colonial which is this area here. It's UNESCO recognized and has a lot of historical value. So this really nice park is called Parque Colón or Columbus Park and at the end of it is one of the oldest churches in all of the Americas. Now heading into the cathedral. The entrance is round the back. 80 pesos for a ticket. Not expensive at all. The interior beautifully kept and this is argued to have been the oldest church in the Americas. However, it took so long to be built since the first stone was laid by Diego Columbus, the son of Christopher Columbus in 1514. It wasn't completed until 1540 and a church in Mexico City completed in 1532 beat this church to the feet or the record. This one has vastly changed from its original form. Sir Francis Drake and his fellow pirates used the church as a base for their assault on the city in 1586 and when they left they all but destroyed most of what was here. So while I walk through some of the beautiful parts of Santo Domingo's Zona Colonial. I thought I would talk a little bit about Punta Cana because I spent a couple of days there but I didn't film a video and I left fairly quickly and the reason for that was because I didn't really vibe with the place. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Cancun in Mexico which I'm not particularly fond of. I feel like it's a little bit overdeveloped and there's too many tourist resorts and just not my sort of place. So the only reason I went there is because the cheapest flights to Latin America from London that I could find for the peak of summer were to Punta Cana. I found a decently priced flight for about 400 pounds. This year, as many of you probably know, flight prices have just shot up enormously. And so 400 pounds to get across the Atlantic Ocean isn't such a bad deal for July. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to be covering beaches and beautiful natural coastal destinations here in the country. I'm planning to head north after visiting Santo Domingo to Las Terrenas and also to Samana, the peninsula. And so it's a lot less overdeveloped there from what I've heard. We'll find out uh, just exactly what it's like, but that's my plan. So I will show you some of the uh, coastline and beaches in the country later on. So for 70 pesos, which is around $1.30, I have now entered into Fortaleza Ozama, which is the oldest colonial ministerial building at the top of this key fort. The flags of Spain, England, France, Haiti, Gran Colombia, the US, and eventually now 
the Dominican Republic have all been flown at some point or another from all those nations that I mentioned each of them has had their time in the Dominican Republic and this fortress has been at the center of many of its historical events right here we get the best view of the Caribbean Sea in the distance and the fort as well if we were to head directly straight in front of us we would hit Venezuela South America is beyond while I'm here I don't want to bore you with history but let me quickly take you through what happened when Christopher Columbus arrived on Hispaniola which is the name of this island which the Dominican Republic today shares with Haiti. At the end of the 15th century Columbus reached Hispaniola and attempted to set up La Navidad which translates to the Christmas, the first settlement on Hispaniola which lies in modern day Haiti. Columbus went back to Spain to gather supplies, more men, more resources and when he came back he found La Navidad had been burnt to the ground. So he tried to set up another settlement further along the coast, this time lying in the modern day Dominican Republic. This one did a little bit better, lasted about four years, but also failed as a result of famine and disease. Columbus's brother Bartolome left La Isabella and headed to the south coast of Hispaniola to set up what would be the third attempt at a settlement on the island and this was named Nueva Isabella, New Isabella. This time it was successful and that city today is Santo Domingo. Some people call it the oldest surviving city in the Americas but that's just not true because of course the Tainos were here and there were many native populations in the Americas way before the Europeans met the people of the Americas so this is just not true and you could say it's the first and longest surviving European settlement in the Americas. Coming out of Fortaleza, Ozama, you walk down Calle de las Damas, which is the first paved street in the Americas, which was laid in 1502. So this here is Plaza de España, and a lot of these restaurants at the end used to be warehouses during the 16th and 17th centuries, and they're great places to grab food and uh, catch the evening atmosphere for a drink perhaps. And right here is the former house of Diego Columbus, the son of Christopher Columbus. I should make it clear as well that the Zona Colonial is not a reflection of the entirety of Santo Domingo. There are many areas and neighborhoods. It spreads out far in every direction. And this is the kind of nicest part you could argue, definitely one of the safest areas. And in the next video, I'm going to head to some of the outskirts to give you a different idea of what Santo Domingo is like and I'm gonna go on a bike with a local so that's coming you will get to see a little bit of the city outside the most touristy parts but right now I'm gonna walk ahead into some of the back streets of the colonial zone which I've heard are quite interesting and not as touristy a bit more like it. Some interesting street art and more of an authentic vibe. A little bit of uh, housekeeping actually, something I forgot to mention when talking about Punta Cana. I took a bus from Punta Cana to Santo Domingo, it takes two to three hours, I can't quite remember, and it costs 400 uh, Dominican pesos 
with Espresso Bavaro, who are very comfy, nice air conditioned bus, organized, leaves on time, all that good stuff. And another thing, I picked up a SIM card too in Punta Cana. I used a company called Claro and I got 15 gigabytes for 15 days at 750 Dominican pesos, which is around 11 pounds or $14, something like that. So yeah, all the info you need to know. You can also take Uber around in Punta Cana and here in Santo Domingo, which is a lifesaver. It's not that expensive and it makes just getting around the cities far, far easier. Love this little street here. There's some fruit being sold. And here we have empanadas, which is a street food type. Hola, uh, quisiera una empanada. Uh, Tienes uh, pollo? Okay, one. Uh, solo uno. All right, so picked up an empanada for 40 pesos. And these little uh, snacks are fried pockets really with different fillings you can get ham and cheese this one is with chicken I haven't tried this type yet so here we go the empanada is pretty good and i'm glad i decided to have a wander around this neighborhood just next to the colonial zone, which is a few streets back that way. Wandering around a little bit more and here is the first monastery built by Europeans in the Americas. And unfortunately, because it's a bit late, it's closed right now. But certainly a landmark place you can see lots of kids in the distance playing basketball there is this amazing vibe to the area that i really like i have to admit santo domingo has impressed me a lot It's this incredible fusion of Latin America with the Caribbean and it's a very colorful fusion and it's a very diverse country from what I've seen as well. You'll find every shade of skin color and it's not like a homogenous society at all. It's a real mixture of populations from many generations of different influences. playing games on the street. A common thing that you see on many street corners in Santo Domingo. In my first day or two, I've seen many of that kind of thing already. Especially next to these corner shops, which blare lots of merengue music, which is a type of music from the area. This is one of the main streets running through the center of Santo Domingo. Some more games on the street here. There's always quite a few spectators as well watching whenever people are playing, facing off on the street. Thank you. 
The Zona Colonial is so great for wandering everywhere you turn your head. There are old authentic buildings in different colors, pretty small garden squares. So I just had some dinner, costillas glaciedas, which are like ribs. And before I wrap up this video, I want to show you a colmado. These corner shops, like the one I showed earlier, that blend merengue or Dominican or Latin American music, but they kind of turn into bars in the evenings. And it's a really interesting thing. I've never seen this kind of combo before like corner shop with a bar and men sitting around drinking and women too of course very interesting there's one just uh, on this street corner here so i'm going to take a look okay so i'm now inside of Colmando uh, and uh, you can see what it's like in here there is some baseball playing on the TVs on either side. Now baseball is really popular in the Dominican Republic. And I've gone with a Presidente, which is a famous beer you may have heard of, and it comes from the Dominican Republic. And I like how they gave it to me here in this uh, little bag. So, I will pour myself some. So I was just texting a Dominican friend of mine saying, look at me, I'm in a Colmado and uh, I'm now officially a Dominican. And then they said, no, no, you're not in a Colmado. A Colmado is a more advanced version of a Colmado. So it's like, one that isn't a grocery store, it's like fully dedicated bar, I guess. So hopefully on this trip I can also track down a Colmar Don as well, as a Colmar. So anybody who writes in the comments, uh, you might want to clarify this if you're from the Dominican Republic. I am obviously not an expert in this area, and it seems that there are levels to this uh, Colmado business. <laughs> Check this out over here, they even have a jukebox machine so you can choose which classic you want to play in the Colmado, which I think is a pretty cool touch. I should also mention where I'm staying here in Santo Domingo. It's a hotel called Aladino and I will give you a quick tour of my room so you can see what it's like. This is where I am for the next five nights and it has everything you need. There's breakfast included, there's a gym, TV, in-room dining. Location-wise, not too far away from the main attractions, 10 or 15 minutes in an Uber to get to the Colonial Zone. The view here is somewhat restricted, but I've seen worse views in my life. So if you're interested in staying here, then check out the link below in the video description if you want to have somewhere like this when you stay in the capital of the Dominican Republic.